I'm going to start a car company. I'm going to sell 100,000 cars next year. Hard to believe. I think it's a brilliant way to invest. That's tripling revenue. That's the key we want for this channel. My girlfriend, Kathy Wood, is having a terrible, terrible year. Her ARC, her main flagship fund, which by the way, is still seeing inflows this year of money. ARC Investments, now guys- Which tells us what? This, we're not done yet. Yeah. This is the poster child of the recent, I call it bubble. I mean, look at this absolute shoot up from COVID. It went to a high of 160, all-time high of 159.70 in February of 2021. And now it's currently at $33 per share. Hit a low probably Friday last week of $32.50 per share. Now, we recently posted a video where I talked about Tesla and Kathy's base case of Tesla. Base meaning worst case. Yeah, her like, hey, it's, it's, this is the low level of, of, of Tesla. Let's put it this way. My belief of Tesla is her worst case is literally, in my opinion, not even possible. Not possible. In terms of not even possible on the high side. So you have to sit there and ask the question, well, how can two people looking at the same data come with very, very different assessments of that data? Well, that's the world of investing. That's what makes investing an art because you can look at two pieces of information. I look at a down market and think, wow, this is awesome. Other people look at a down market and say, this is terrible. Yeah. It's the exact same thing. The market's down. Some people look at it as good. Some look at it as bad, right? Yep. We look when they're in the real estate crash, I could not buy enough real estate. I was buying everything I could see. Everybody's telling me, good God, these toxic assets. And I was like, I'll take your toxic assets. I used to look at I used to be the one that looked at stocks as going down as bad. 1,000% I did too. And, and it was funny because I started out trading 100% and it was fine. I made money on both sides, but I looked at it and I was like, man, th th things are getting really bad out there. I hated seeing down days. It was just not that it affected me any, in any way, like my retirement was falling, right, but it gives you that knot in your stomach and now it's completely different. Now you look at it as an opportunity to buy better companies at better prices. Yeah, exactly. And that's the key we want for this channel. We want you to realize that the mentality and emotion of investing is all about waiting for other people to freak out and for you to be calm during that time. You know, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger are big believers in dollar cost averaging, just like we are in a low cost ETFs. With that said, we do believe that if you want to be more active and have a portion of your portfolio dedicated to buying individual stocks, we want you to still understand the mentality and emotional aspect of investing that'll help you do well during those bad times, during the times the market's falling. Because if you believe that this is irrational, you have to believe that in some situations, this is irrational. I'm not saying that's the case here with ARC, but I'm saying in general, if you find good cash flowing businesses, that you can buy at reasonable prices, then they will be irrational when they go down. Yeah, and I, I want to point something, and I hope this resonates with at least one person. So the, she invests in disruption and, and innovation or whatever. So not, none of those companies were disruptive back here in this time frame, and they were only disruptive when we had a total rally in the market, and now they're no longer disruptive. Well, she still believes they're disruptive. She does, but this is the market perception of it doesn't believe that anymore. Well, the thing I want to really reiterate, go look at her comments here. She talked about Michael Burry not understanding yeah. what investing was. She yeah. said value. She criticized value. When it got to here, she said our stocks are in deep value territory. She still has that same thesis out there. You don't sit there and see me talking about a company being dis saying disruption is, but investing in disruption is stupid. I don't believe investing in disruption is stupid. I think it's a brilliant way to invest as long as you pay a reasonable price. <laughs> <laughs> Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. It's entirely possible to overpay for a good thing. And that's what makes bubbles. And I do find it very hard to believe that you're going to find 25 companies at one time that are going to be disruptive and change the world. Well, in fairness to her, Mo, in the world of venture capital. So here's where we get a disconnect. Do I, do I think that she is correct in that you need to see find a few winners that really get your tail end results? Absolutely. However, she's investing in companies that are so, so big that already have such large market caps. Yeah. For them to get the 50, 100 time returns, it's, it's going to be very, very difficult yeah. at these valuations. It's not like you're investing in $40 million companies. It's not like you're Andreessen Horowitz who are, have a venture capital firm or Sequoia right. who's out there investing $20, $30, $40 million to try to make four, five, six billion $6 billion right. on that investment. That's the difference. And they're going to see a lot of strikeouts along the way. We're talking about major companies. We're talking about companies like about Tesla's half a, half a trillion dollars. Roku, 
Zoom. Zoom. These are their biggest companies. I look at the saying. I'm pulling up Zoom right here. $20.7 billion company. Yeah. I mean, does Zoom become a $2 trillion company? Maybe. However, what does it have to happen? What has to happen in this world for Zoom to become a $2 trillion company where she could get 100 times her money? Well, let's do that, Matt. And that's where I'm sitting here talking about with, if you believe that when you buy a stock, you're buying a piece of a business, keep watching. If you don't believe that, we're, we're at a standstill because you have to believe that to even go through and go forward watching videos about understanding investing. Yeah. Or if you don't understand that, that's the first time you've ever heard that. Stick around and listen to this. Absolutely. Because, because this, this we believe, we never, we didn't know that at, at first. We when I first started business. investing, I thought I was just buying a ticker symbol that went up and down. Yep. And then when I started to realize that I was buying a piece of a business, I was buying a piece of cash flow. It all made the world so much easier for me to understand. Because I'm just sitting there saying, I'm paying today for a future stream of cash flow. Now, is it possible that cash flow is negative to start and then all of a sudden goes huge? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I can overpay or underpay for this cash flow. There's a wide range of possibilities for every investment. We don't know what's going to happen in the next 5, 10, 20 years. But our goal is be conservative. Yeah. Make reasonable assumptions. This is why we have our stock analyzer tool. Our stock analyzer tool is specifically created. So let's pull up a company like Adobe. We just did a video on Adobe. Our stock analyzer tool is specifically created to go low, middle, and high. I want you to sit there and make low assumptions, mid reasonable assumptions, and very aggressive. Like, hey, if they kill it, this is what they'll do. Because you should have a wide range of possibilities for your outcome. But if you buy a packet of 20 or 30 companies at a reasonable price making these assumptions, you're going to do well. Now, is it hard to do that? Of course. Why? Because then you see things like this and you have FOMO and you sit there and you have, I need to buy this. I need to buy this investment because everybody else is in it. And it just went up like crazy. Guys, the luxury that Mo and I have is we have zero FOMO. I literally do. I actually this actually gets me to go, I don't want to be in it. it I, I, the second I see parabolic rise, I don't even look at this investment. I just say, let me just wait. I'll just wait for everything to fall to the wayside. Look at a company like Palantir. Palantir is a company that we hated at 40 to 45 bucks a share. And I said, eh, maybe I'll take a look at it at five. Look at it now, Mo. It's down five and a half percent today. Oh my god. To 655. So here's a company that went up to $45 a share on January 27th, 2021. Ironically, right before the all-time high of ARC, because that was when all the hype was at its, at its peak. February of 2021 was when all these meme stocks and all the big high flyers, because we were coming off the one year off of COVID, it was incredible. But I sat there and said, what would Palantir have to do to be worth? Because right now it's at $13.5 billion market cap. So when it was eight times, seven times larger, that was a $100 billion company. What would it have to do in profit and revenue and cash flow to justify a hundred billion? billion dollar market cap. And if you believe that you're buying a company when you buy a stock, then you understand that. If it makes sense to you, again, keep listening. But that's what we're trying to repeat over and over. ARK has a problem. 17 or six, 15 of their top 20 holdings don't even make money. And they're selling for really, really high valuations. And they're diluting shareholders constantly. What do I mean by that? They're issuing more and more shares. Why is that bad? Because as an investor, if you own a company that keeps issuing shares, they're bringing more investors on along with you and splitting up your profit more and more by other investors. That's the problem. So without you asking, let's say you are one of 10 investors. You own 10% of the business. They all of a sudden say, well, we need more investors. We're going to sell five more shares out. Now you own one of 15 shares instead of one of 10 shares. You now own 6.6% .6 of the business versus 10%. And so not only is the company struggling to make money, but you're also being diluted. Yeah. And that's a problem. So we look at this and say, we've seen this before. We've seen this at market tops before. We saw this during real estate. We saw this, we see it now during crypto. We saw it during the dot coms. We saw it in the nifty 50s in the 70s. You always see these things. They happen over and over. What I encourage you to do is to sit back, rewatch this video, understand that when you buy a company, when you buy a stock, you're buying a piece of a business. You're buying a future stream of cash flow. You are buying a balance sheet. And if the less you pay for it, the better you will do. Your goal is when the market is disconnected from value, when the market perceives things to be bad, that you sit there and say, what's really going on here? And it's much easier when the overall market's down, right? Because Mo, where is the, the S&P going to zero? No. 
Could Adobe well, go to zero? It could go to zero, but we have a bigger problem. Yes. <laughs> could Adobe go to zero? Yeah, very easy. Adobe could go to zero a lot faster than the market. Than the market would. Because you're banking on 500 companies going to zero Five, versus one. Yes. The entire US economy is essentially going to zero. So when it comes to the whole market, start there. Is the market going to zero? Probably not. Is it still scary to see my money go down? Absolutely, guys. I hate it. I Listen, I have no FOMO. And still, when I see my money go down, I go, oh, that sucks. Now, granted, it's not as bad as other people, but it still sucks for me. And that's the whole mentality and emotion that we're trying to preach here. So Kathy Wood said Tesla is going to get to $3,000 a share by 2025, right? 2300 a share if it's put adjusted. Okay. Well, I put these numbers in here. So ignore, ignore this side. Oh my gosh. 200% revenue growth, 20% profit margin in the car industry, 20% free cash margin. I gave him a PE of 45, uh, price to free cash flow of 25, a 10% return because we don't really care about that. And here's your numbers. Four thousand. <laughs> this is what it takes. 200% revenue growth from here. Guys, that's not doubling. That's tripling revenue. 100% doubling. So it's tripling revenue every year for the next three years. And I did a three-year analysis because 2025. By the way, tripling of revenue every year for three years is 27 times more revenue in three years. This is 27 times more revenue. This is why it's ridiculous. Is it possible? I mean, I don't even think it's possible. Look at look at Elon. I Elon talks about his issues with, with, with manufacturing and I, I everything. Don't, I don't think that there's enough natural resources out there to put that many batteries in cars. Correct. That's the problem. So there's so many constraints there that forget about the stock price. It's just, what would it take? Even if it was possible, even the market, if I said to you right now, I'm going to start a car company. I'm going to sell hundred thousand cars next year. It's entirely possible to sell hundred thousand cars, but in my situation with my resource, everything, could I do it? No. No, it's, impo- it's possible. You have to start a company. You have to start, you have to manufacture, et cetera, get people to work for you. So guys, this makes sense as you do one thing. Subscribe to the channel, watch more videos. You'll walk away having a better understanding of investing in money because the more you learn, the less you fear. Thank you very much.